Hi guys and girls and welcome to another guide from Astronomy for Beginners. Again, I'm Mike Pyatt and today I'm going to show you um, a particular instrument called the Maxitov Cassegrain or also known as a Compact. The CF is a Maxitov, alright? Again, it's still the same, um, it's basically a, a Skywatcher brand, alright? You get different other brands as well like Mead and Celestron and, and so forth. Alright, again, as I mentioned before about reflectors and refractors, now, as you can imagine, is that this scope is is basically the combination of the two. Basically, this has a lens and it does have mirrors. So, hence the reason why we call it a compound telescope. Now, there's two different varieties. You get the the Schmidt category and you get the Maxitov. Obviously, what I have here is a Maxitov. Uh, they basically work in the same principle, all right. But the the Schmidt has a corrector uh, plate. Which is a, a certain uh, uh, lens sort of uh, uh, up front, but on the Maxitov, it's actually a curved, um, like the miscus lens, so like a concave sort of lens. So uh, there's certainly slight differences between the two. Also, with the Schmidt in the center, like the reflector, as a member, there's like a secondary mirror that has a secondary mirror. On this one, okay. <coughs> Right. How this works is like both both telescopes. What happens is what happens as you can see here. You've got the objective. This is the corrective plate or the meniscus lens on the Mac. Basically, the light gets gathered into here. All right, and basically it goes down the tube, and at that tube, there's a. Um, a, a basically a, a primary mirror at the back now that will be a concave mirror and what that concave mirror will bounce the light back up the tube and goes into the middle of the uh, basically the, the secondary mirror or, or on, on the mat it's basically a, uh, a mirror coating and then from that mirror coating the light then goes back again but this time it goes all the way down to the tube and then through the eyepiece holder. Okay. Also with this one, this one there, you usually have a, a, a secondary. Um, basically, you have a um, a mirror, diagonal mirror, but this one is a flip mirror system. So basically, it's still got a mirror and it shoots up there and then gets focused by the eyepiece. All right. Basically, the reason for that is it's enable it to be uh, compact. All right. Basically, this telescope, I mean, it's actually 1500 um, focal length, which is 1.5 meters long in theory. So, you know, it's quite, it's quite a long telescope, but because of the design and the way it's engineered, it basically reduces the tube length to a nice compact size um, of literally, like, it's literally a quarter, you know. Um, Again, it's still got a uh, decent amount of aperture as well. All right, you know, this is about five inches or one to uh, 127 mil. You get different sizes of different degree. All right, but that's how it works. Right. The advantages of the, this device, all right, um, particularly on the the, the Schmitt, uh, on the um, the Maxitovs, is because of the compact um, size. And the longer portable length in this, basically it'll, it makes things portable. You can take this anywhere. You know, you can take it to a mobile site and all that. And it's brilliant. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, nice compact. You take it around, put it in a, in a other sack or something like that. <coughs> so it's quite portable. And you can get um, some of these uh, you know, sizes from like. Four inch, very up to even eight inches. Even an eight inch can be quite portable, but they can be quite heavy as well. Once they get past a certain, you know, five, uh, five inch like this one, it's quite, quite light. 
But when you start going to six inches and onwards, that's when they start to get really heavy. Because obviously the bigger corrective plate on there, and obviously the primary mirror at the back and all, all adds to the weight. So from like three to five inch uh, aperture, they're quite portable. Anything below, anything higher than that, they'll start to get heavy, a bit on the heavy side. But still, if you know, if you can carry the weight, you know, they're still quite portable in a way. If you take an eight inch Maxxis off anyway. But uh, the advantages of this scope, because of the long portable length as well, enables you to put um, uh, eyepieces and you get more markation from them as well. Um, this particular scope is absolutely ideal for planets all right, and the moon. All right? This telescope will give you apple type performance. Basically, the colour free is non existent on these scopes whatsoever. If there is, there will be really, really tiny amount and you won't even. You won't even notice it's there, all right. But they offer um, color-free, false, you know, false color, um, op, you know, false optics, uh, and because there's long follow the length, it's ideal for the planets and the lunar as well, all right. Fantastic scope. However, it can be used for diesels, but because there's long focal length, its diesels tend to appear slightly dimmer on these. You can use them for visual, which are perfect. But uh, yeah, they can be used for diesels. Um, also, it's still got the same sort of uh, setup, you know, with the dust cap. Also, on this one, it has the dovetail attached to the tube. And you get some of the bigger ones probably have a um, a um, you know, your scope rings and all that to hold it. But some, most of them, usually have a dovetail attached to the tube itself. Um, the focus uh, is slightly different on these, all right. Here's just uh, here's your focus on there. Now they can be a bit fiddly, all right, and take a while to focus, all right. They're not as easy as the reflectors or the refractors, but you know they can be a bit troublesome sometimes. But you can still get away with it, all right. You can still focus, but you know they've got a long focus travel on them, all right. But what that does is this actually moves the the main mirror. So this actually doesn't move the, the eyepiece holder and all that. All that does is actually moves the main mirror backwards and forwards. All right. Okay. This advantage is, is it's a scope that's brilliant for uh, photography on the planets and the moon and all that, which is brilliant. Yeah. However, for diesels, because of the long photo length, we're talking around about f10. And, and so forth. In fact, this would be f13.9 or something stupid like Because it's really, it's a, it's a slow telescope. So if you're trying to use this for imaging um, uh, diesels and all that, you can do it, but the uh, the images will take longer to expose, especially on a DSLR uh, or CCD, you know. Compared to the reflector or a short focus refractor, these are very slow and they take the light to take some while, you know. And also because of the long vertical length is you need to have a really good equatorial mount, very accurately polar line and tracking as well. It's really uh, crucial on this particular instrument. Otherwise it will show the trailing really easily. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, <coughs> so not really ideal for diesels, but I won't say it's impossible. You can still do it, alright? But really, this is mainly for planetary and and, uh, and the moon. Also, can be useful for uh, looking at the sun, right? But I would not use this uh, telescope until you fitted a solar filter, all right? And I'll never use, you know, I'll never ever use a uh, screw on solar filter that you can get on the cheap stuff. I think they start making them anyway. But I'll never ever. Uh, Make sure when you look at the sun, buy a proper solar filter and go to a proper astronomical te telescope shop that will sell them, alright? And basically you can get them, they'll fit over the lens and you can use it, then you can use it visually and you can look at the sun. But don't look at the sun without a filter. If you do, you're going to lose your eyes, alright? You're going to blind your eyes. And I'm telling you, it will be not, it will not be, you know, looking at it next minute. It's literally seconds you lose your sight, just like that. It just burns the retinas off your eyes. So don't do it, all right? Seriously, for any telescope, no matter for this one, 
the reflector or the refractor, you always use a solar filter. You must use that. I can't, I can't uh, stress that any enough. All right, don't do, use a scope without a solar filter. Okay, as I said before, because of the long focal length, all right, um, you're going to get more modification. Uh, the also problem about this particular telescope is because of the long focal length, it, this the max top provides very narrow field of view as well, and trying to get objects into the centre and all that can be a bit difficult on this uh, instrument. It's got an extremely narrow field of view. The Schmidt Cassegrain, which is the one with the correct uh, plate, um, they tend to uh, <coughs> they tend to uh, give a slightly wider field of view. Um, they're slightly short, um, shorter um, focal length as well, so you can get away with imaging diesels, but still you need a focal reducer, which basically halves the length of this. Oh, oh as I mentioned before, on the Maxwell top you can use it for diesels, and you can get a focal reducer for this as well, a cheap one. So a 0.5 and basically halves it down to about a 7 and, and or, uh, F, F7, F8. So you can do it, but then it's still pretty long. So, um, like I say, it's not an ideal score for DSO imaging or DSLR uh, camera. Okay. Um, another thing, what well, I mentioned about the Schmidt uh, Cassegrain, um, the Schmidt Cassegrain has screws on the corrector plate for the secondary. Uh, the secondary mirror is a separate glass. This is just a, a plating. Now, the Schmidt tend to might like, lose the collimation slight if it gets moved about. This thing, however, hardly loses uh, collimation. And to honest with you, I mean, I've, I've taken it to a uh, remote uh, place uh, for stargazing and all that, and I've took it everywhere, all right? And this holds collimation really well. The only thing if you uh, would lose collimation is if you dropped it. That's, that's how bad, you know. But then when you drop it, it probably might break it as well. But this holds collimation really well, and to be honest, you don't really need any collimation. If it does need collimation, I it will it will need specialist um, basically take it to a telescope shop, which they probably have expertise because collimating in this uh, particular instrument takes them doing. All right, uh, I don't know how to collimate this. I can collimate the reflector, but I can't collimate these. So when they do need collimation and they start to lose the, the resolution or they start to get blurred, then take it to a telescope shop that, that, that deals with the maintenance. Again, like I said before, <coughs> it's the same sort of thing with the cleaning, with the refractor. You know, use a camel hair brush if it gets uh, dusty and all that. And also use lens cleaning cloths and, uh, and also the, uh, the, the sprays you can get as well. However, again, same again with refractors, there's no necessary to clean it every single time you use it, alright? Um, it's every once in a blue one. I've only cleaned this scope and I've had it for three years and I've only cleaned it once or twice. That's it. That's how much cleaning is necessarily needed. Um, one big disadvantage of this scope as well is if you're using it out in the, out of the field, alright? This Everyone calls these as dew magnets, all right? Dew magnets. The uh, reason why they call them dew magnets is basically they attract uh, the moisture in the air, all right? Um, because there's no dew shield fitted to these uh, equipment, uh, basically moisture gets on that on the on the, the lens on the objective lens really easily, all right? So if you were considering buying something like this, I would seriously get a dew shield for it. All right, you can get them that wrap around there. All right, you some can screw on there, but you can get some. Most of them just wrap around. They're cheap, cheap to buy. The one I got is is basically the same thing. But it, oh, it, it has a juice, uh, juice band. Basically, it's like a heater band element. And what that does, that warms the corrector plate, but you need a little bit of power, so that stops the moisture from ever entering on there. All right, so if you're going to get an item like this, get a the first item you'll get for this particular instrument is get a dew shield at least. However, as time to time, moisture will get in eventually. So, like, you know, if it's a really dewy night, it'll probably get in there for about two or three, uh, you know, two or three hours 
and then you will start to get in there. Then uh, my best advice is never ever when you take it back, you know, back home and it starts to mist up, never put the dust cap in there, all right, and leave it. Obviously, take it to a warm room and let the dew just evaporate, all right, and let it evaporate until it's completely clear, all right. Once it's clear, then put it off. Because what happens is, if you leave the moisture in there, then more more likely that moisture will turn to water, and that water might seep into the tube and then leak into the optics, all right. Again, because it's a sealed tube variety, there is no requirement for cleaning the mirror on these, and the mirrors take probably probably 10, maybe 15 years until they really need quiet. They might get a little bit dusty on the primary mirror, but a little bit of dust is not going to degrade the performance of this instrument. All right, but usually when they, when they do need quiet cleaning, it's probably every 10, 15 years, that's how long. Providing you always put your dust caps on, and on the, the eyepiece cover as well. Once you keep it sealed, but it's not in use, it's completely fine, all right? Again, I forgot to mention is, you have a bracket there so you can put your finder scope, or like this one is a red dot finder, all right? Really essential, you definitely need a, um, a finder of some sort with this instrument because of the narrow field of view, okay? But, my recommendations to a beginner, now, there's quite a few good um, good makes now. I'm I'm not, I'm not too clued upon the Schmidt categories, all right. But I know that Skywatcher do a decent uh, max stuff. I mean, this is a, a good recommendation to get. You can get you can get a, the one two seven with the go to mount for about four hundred pounds or something like that, all right. With the go go to mount and. Uh, the 127 you just can't go wrong. However, I've, um, I've not seen a smaller one from Skywatcher, but I have seen a Celestron. Celestron do a 4SE, and uh, again, it's an orange tube one, and that's a go-to um, uh, computer as well. The 4 inch is about 100, uh, I think it's 100 millimeters or something, uh, max it off. And, oh, it's slightly smaller than this, but I've heard a lot of people that's used it are quite impressed by its performance. All right, between four and five inches, I think it's a really good uh, bargain for a, uh, a beginner. Now, I have known uh, the me do one. They do a 90 millimeter. They used to do a 102 millimeter, but they stopped making them. So they basically do a 90 millimeter or a 127 or 125 ETX. It's basically ETX 90, ETX 125, and they're a really good telescope as well. All right, the 90 is not going to show as much compared to 125 ETX, but you can pick them up around about 400, 600 pounds now. All right, uh, they're quite, you know, they're quite, they're quite um, a little bit expensive, but they've still got a decent amount of aperture, and they'll show you a lot of views and all that. All right, not so great on diesel uh, if you want to take photos or planets and all that uh, well, well actually for planets you know, it's brilliant you know I mean, you can just attach a webcam in here all right even attaching the webcam and you can get some really good results through a webcam from this and I've used this particular scope and I've placed some images on the, the Facebook forum and of, of you know of Saturn uh, Uranus um, Jupiter and Venus and the resolution on this you know on the planets is unbelievable from this uh, from this uh, telescope. But again, I'd say if you're a planetary if you're a planetary uh, enthusiast or lunar enthusiast, then you can't go wrong with Maxwell. Um, the Schmidt ca uh, the Schmidt they're all right. They're actually a good all rounder telescope. Um, they tend to lose collimation slits a little bit more. Um, but um, I'm not too clued up on on the uh, Schmidt cascades. But Decent size, uh, ref, you know, um, decent size Maxitov like this, you know, you can't go wrong for money. If you want something that's portable, compact, shows enough aperture, and you can use it planets, can't go wrong without a doubt. All right, but uh, like I say, it, it comes to the part of now of uh, I've finished just about everything I described about this, this scope. And um, if there's any questions, or you know, just feel free to ask us again. 
on the forum of uh, to a Sonry for beginners and like myself or, or Simon can help you out in that sort of thing. And feel free, post as much images as you want of the equipment and all that, of what you've seen and all that. And like I say, um, also go to the next guide, which uh, will be planned probably next week. So, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much. Bye.